Hello, uh, YouTubers. I have another word that I'm going to share with you. It's not my word, um, God's word, through Beverly uh, Jules Gard Fisher, a, a friend of mine. And you can contact her at God's Blessings to You at yahoo.com. And it starts um, the judgment and revival coming upon this nation and other nations will supersede man's imagination, for there will be much upheaval that will cause men to fall to their knees. Many who thought they would never see judgment or know it will be appalled, for they thought they had the world in their hands. They thought they were fully in control, but they are about to find out it is not them in control, but me. Awake, 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 for I am bringing my prophets out of the shadows, caves, and hidden places for the end time war. I'm, ca I'm calling you out to meet the calling I have placed on your lives. I'm calling you to fulfill all that I've called you to. For it is time for my words of truth to be spoken and known. It is time to tear down the walls of the enemy and bring freedom to the captives. It is time for my glory to come forth over the earth. It is time for all to arise and shine. For my son is coming to walk upon the earth once again. Some of you have felt very safe where I have you hidden. Others are wondering if it isn't uh, soon time. And I am stirring things up and the pot is boiling and getting ready to explode at any time. But understand any time is always in my timing so that you know and understand the power of your prayers. They do make a difference just as they did for Jonah and the town of Nineveh. And then um, this is from Jonah 3, 1 to 10. This is in the complete Jewish Bible. The word of Adonai came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it to it the message I will give you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh as Adonai had said. Now Nineveh was such a large city that it took three days just to cross it. Yonah began his entry into the city and had finished only his first day of proclaiming. In the 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown when the people of Nineveh um, believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he got up from his throne, took off his robe, put on sackcloth, and sat in ashes. He then had his proclamation made throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, no person, animal, herd, or flock is to put anything in his mouth. They are neither to eat or drink water. They must be covered with sackcloth, both people and animals, and they are to cry out to the God with all their might. Let each of them turn from his evil way and from the violence they practice. Who knows? Maybe God will change his mind, relent, and turn from his fierce anger, and then we won't perish. When God saw by their deeds that they had turned from their evil way, he relented and did not bring on them the punishment he had threatened. And then uh, the Lord began to speak again to her, Your heartfelt prayers can and have changed my heart towards man and towards nations, but there are still consequences to be faced. So do not cease praying for my mercy and grace, for I will hear your prayers and I do have compassion on my people who call me by my name and seek me above all else. Second Chronicles 7.14 Then, if my people who bear my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Again, the Lord uh, spoke to her, Your heartfelt humility and worship of me will draw me into you like a zoom lens. For I love to hear you worship me. I love to be in your presence when you worship me. Even when times are tough, do not let up on worship, but continue it and persist despite what it looks like. For looks can be deceiving and you never know what I have up my sleeve. Ha, think about it. I have some mighty big sleeves so I can hide a lot from the enemy and from you until my timing is right. So do not give up, for it is when you worship me and are obedient to what I ask of you and tell you to do that you win my heart to help you overcome that which is before you. Worship and obedience are two of your greatest weapons. Prayer is another, so don't let up on them. All, all can help turn the tide to a victory in me, just as a win for Joshua was determined by Moses' Mata staff and the help of Aaron and her to hold up his arms. It will always take teamwork to get the job done. You are never alone. I am always with you. I see and hear everything that takes place. And then um, she quotes from Exodus 17, 8 to 16, says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel at Rephidim. 
And Moshe said to Yahshua, Choose men for us. Go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with God's staff in my hand. Yahushua did as Moshe had told him and fought with Amalek. Then Moshe and Aaron and Hur went up the top of the hill. When Moshe raised up his hand, Israel prevailed, and when he let it down, Amalek prevailed. However, Moshe's hands grew heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, and one of the one of the one side and the other on the other, so that his hands stayed steady until sunset. Thus, Yeshua, Yahshua uh, defeated Amalek, putting her people to the sword. Adonai said to Moshe, Ha, 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 write this for a book to be remembered and tell it to Yahshua. I will completely blot out any memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moshe built an altar and called it Adonai Nisi. Adonai is my banner or miracle. And said, because their hand was against the throne of the throne of God, Adonai will fight Amalek generation to generation. Do not fool yourself into thinking that you did something by yourself, the Lord says, for pride comes before a fall. Remember, I see and hear everything. Excuse me, you have no secrets from me. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and arrogance before failure. Excuse me, Proverbs 15, 3. I think my stomach's saying, feed me, Seymour. Um, the eyes of Adonai are everywhere, watching the evil and the good. Do not fear the days ahead, for I will fill those who need to be filled with every good thing. And then she quoted from Deuteronomy 28, 12. Adonai will open for you his good treasure, the sky, to give your land its rain in the right seasons and to bless everything you undertake. You will lend to many nations and not borrow. Psalm 23, 6, goodness and grace will pursue me every day of my life and I will live in the house of Adonai for years and years to come. And the Lord said, I will not let you enter battle or stand tall for me without supporting you in the ways that I support those who serve me. Do not think it will be by the ways of man, for my ways are not man's ways. I do not need the material things of man to overcome and succeed in battle. I need those who are willing to serve me and be obedient to me, regardless of what it looks like before them. I do not call on those faint of heart, while there may be those who believe they are faint of heart. Hey, hey, they will not be once I have filled them. Hallelujah. As I said before, you will have what you need if you serve me with all your heart. For I am who I am, and I lack nothing. Am I not the owner of all creatures? Psalm 59 to 11 says, I have no need for a bull from your farm or male goats from your pens, for all forest creatures are mine already, as are the animals of a thousand hills. I know all the birds in the mountains. Whatever moves in the fields is mine. Did I not? And then the Lord continued, Did I not create all mankind and everything else? So what do you have to worry about? If I don't have it, I can create it to. All you have to do is be obedient to whatever I tell you to do, and all would be well with you. Trust me. Above all else, trust me. Use my wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and let your heart follow me, not you, and you will do well with all that I give you. With all the days ahead as they are, um, Bev, now this is Bev, um, it is important that we continue to worship the Lord with our whole heart to trust him in everything. What we don't know without the revelation from God is the exact plans of the enemy. This is what I can share at this time. And um, there's two links, and I'll add those, God willing, to just below the video. John Johnny Enlow had a word published in several places called Hang On for Three Months of Needed Exposures. You could probably Google that, Hang On for Three Months of Needed Exposures. You'll need to read it, so here are the two sites. And one is on Elijah List, one is on Facebook. This will give you a spiritual picture of what is going to be going on and some insights into the physical as well. He's talking about the period from April 4th to July 4th. What he's saying about hidden forces is correct. At this time in our nation and the world, there are many powers and principalities operating over the world and in humans as well. 
Ephesians 6 to 10, uh, 10 to 12 says, Finally, grow powerful in union with the Lord, in union with his mighty strength. Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary. For we are not struggling against human beings, but against rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers governing the darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. We have to remember that as Christians. We've so many have gotten into a political spirit where, and this is me, a political spirit where you're fighting, you know, against particular people. And it's so easy to do that because it's so angering the things that are going on. But this is a reminder that we're fighting against flesh. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. It's okay. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might um, is the King James Version. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. The physical realm, Bev continues, is where many don't understand that what is in the spiritual realm is the real, the real deal, and it definitely affects us in the physical realm, whether you see it in front of you or not. There are many levels of evil lurking, waiting to destroy this nation and people of the world. This can be seen in the secret societies that so many of those in government and the world's governments belong to. These societies are joining forces to bring forth a new order in the world, which is not of the Lord. They are becoming bolder by the day, proclaiming their plans and purposes over the media and business and government. Many are weaving a tangled web and many are caught in the web itself. They know what they are doing and who they are working for in the end. And I'm going to add an example. Today on Facebook, there's an article about the Democrats pushing for uh, Sharia law um, approval, and, a, and it's like insanity, you know? Th they get people to come out and, f and fight for women, and Sharia law is totally dominating against women and abusive towards women. Um, so the insanity continues, but the Lord, uh, Bev says, we need to pay attention because history repeats itself, just like the lessons you learn from the Lord. If you don't learn them the first time, you get to jump back on the merry-go-round and ride it again to experience the lesson again and again. That's true. Each time it gets harder, oftentimes because we give up too easily or don't do things the way we're supposed to because we let our pride and stubbornness get in the way we think and, and we do it our way instead of seeking God about his way. So until we've learned the lesson God wants us to learn, we will continue riding the merry-go-round. History does the same thing. That's why the economy and other things go in types of cycles, and the histories of governments go in cycles. We have to learn to recognize the cycle so that we can change it for the good. This is part of the internal war going on now in the government in the U.S. Some bad things, rebellion, witchcraft, idolatry, murder, death, destruction, perversion, and lust and greed, to name a few, have brought us to the point of being very close to losing the government we started with as a nation. The current government is being reset along with all things in it, which means the economy and business. The Lord is using Trump as a Cyrus in doing this. The other forces do not want the reset to occur and are doing everything they can to destroy it and everything with it. They do not want the reset and because they want the new order for the world so they can take over and run the world for themselves like an oligarchy. They also do not want all the evil they have taken part in exposed to the world. They have been covered up in many ways, including using fear and intimidation and perversion of truth and, and even murder, I, I'll add. But with our prayers for God to expose all the evil, it is being exposed. Many of those doing evil are still in denial because they think they're still under covers. But our God sees and hears and knows everything. So they will be uncovered in his time because he is about to honor our prayers, much of which will happen in the next three months. With prayer and fasting, much can be changed to make any reset more peaceful. But we need to fill the prayer bowls in heaven so they can be dumped out over us. We need to take our part in this battle and not think it isn't for us, but for someone else to fight. You enlisted in God's army when you invited him into your heart, and there's no choice about it. You can't say, I can't fight because whatever. God knows you and will hold you accountable. I've seen two and three-year-olds invite the Lord into their heart and pray for people who were healed and delivered. Age is not a factor, nor is sickness, gender, or anything else. God is raising an army, and you invited yourself to join. 
What you need is a relationship with the Lord and his plans and strategies for the days ahead and your own obedience to join in this partnership with him. He once told me that obedience is the highest order of praise. I believe that because